joins us now to talk more about it. Molly, thanks first of all for joining us. And explain why you say social distancing is a privilege. Sure, this was one thing that we wanted to look at was the impact of Chicago neighborhoods on um, who died of the disease. So um, what we expected to find was that maybe density or public transit was gonna matter. But when we looked at all the different characteristics of the neighborhood, what we found was that the ability to social distance, specifically the ability to have access to broadband internet was most tightly associated with COVID-19 deaths. So while that could have various implications, um, it might be a flag for neighborhoods that had an easier time navigating the shutdown without having to leave the house, um, sort of indicating that this might be a place that we would be able to have some policy that could change the, the course of how the disease is spreading now. Well, saying, of course, that uh, these are lower um, income uh, areas, they have to live in cramped areas, and they have to work in areas where they can't uh, social distance mm -hmm. and things like that, right? Absolutely. And as much as the living situation, we found that your access to broadband internet mattered most tightly. So even if you lived in a multi-generational household, that the access to broadband internet seemed to be able to influence um, or at least be associated with the, your risk of dying of the disease. And your study put some really stark numbers to this here. 40% of the coronavirus deaths have been in the uh, black community, 33% in the Latino community, and 20 percent among whites here. What do you do with that information and how can you make things uh, better for those who are, are suffering disproportionately? Right. And I think that's a really good question. I think that policy really has to be the answer. Individual actions matter, um, but these are populations that are already heavily burdened by disease and heavily burdened by the coronavirus. And there have to be policies that can help support them in the ability to socially distance and in the ability to sort of otherwise um, avoid to to avoid this disease another thing that has been brought to light because a lot of people knew this already was the systemic racism in the health insurance areas and the health industry as far as medicine is concerned and things like that right and that's what we found even more interestingly is healthcare access mattered and among black and hispanic and latino residents even if you were in a neighborhood that had low levels of social vulnerability, you still had a higher rate of dying, sort of pointing to this, this impact of the systemic racism. And this was a snapshot in time, right? As I understand it, you did this early on in the pandemic. Uh, what do you think would happen if you would compare those numbers then to now? Would there be any change or would it be exactly the same or maybe even more pronounced? You know, that's a really interesting question. I think one thing that could be very interesting to look at is the impact of all the high-speed internet access points that were given out by Chicago Public Schools, if that had any sort of effect on people's ability to social distance. So I think that's definitely something that we want to look at as hopefully the second wave draws to a close. So Molly, you have all this information, now what? Well, I think that there's definitely some policies here that need to go in. So it, the social distancing and being able to support people in their ability to social distance and also healthcare access was also one of those huge things that came up, not as surprisingly, but it, it was very tightly linked. So having some sort of health navigators at testing sites or otherwise being able to connect people to healthcare so that if you find out that you are sick, that you can get connected to appropriate care. All right, Molly Scan O'Brien, we appreciate your help. Be safe, be well. Thank you. you too.